at what point are what's something you're willing not to say in order to make a point that is important to you? What I wouldn't say is that the New York Times is a respectable paper. That's one thing I wouldn't be willing to say. Yesterday, J.D. Vance had a pretty great rally. And boy, the more he gets in front of these audiences, the I mean, he was good at the beginning, but he's getting better and better and better. The more you see J.D. Vance, the more you recognize this is why Donald Trump picked him. So he can campaign in uh, Western Pennsylvania, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, and gather up all those votes of the people that he represents right now in the state of Ohio. And during this rally, he took a moment to, well, engage in a friendly back and forth with the New York Times reporter. And it's really good stuff. You know, Mike, I'll give you a question just to be nice. This will be our last question. And this is the uh, New York Times, so don't hold it against them. Uh, the paper of record, New York Times. I appreciate you inviting. By the way, I appreciate the reporter sort of playing along and saying, hey, 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 that's the paper of record, New York Times, pal. But even before we get into this, I think it needs to be um, acknowledged that J.D. Vance right here during a rally from the podium, giving microphones to hostile reporters so that he can engage and answer their questions. Can you imagine Kamala Harris doing this? Not that she would have any hostile reporters. Can you imagine Tim Walls doing this? I mean, J.D. Vance right here is taking more live questions as if this rally is a press conference than Kamala Harris has since the first day she was appointed, anointed, coronated as the nominee for the Democrats. Do you realize that she has never engaged in one open press conference gaggle uh, exchange with reporters at all? And here's J.D. Vance doing it just in the middle of a Tuesday afternoon during a rally. And yet the reporters still love the Democrats. They, they are the most self-loathing individuals you will ever meet. That because of their own warped and narrow political ideology and wanting to be in the cool kids club by supporting Democrats, they don't realize that they are actually undermining their own existence as political reporters in this nation. This guy right here, J.D. Vance, and the top of the ticket, Donald Trump, their election in November and their administration over the next four years will be the most important validating uh, 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 action for political reporters that can happen. If, if Kamala Harris wins this election, it will be an affirmation and confirmation that D.C. political reporters are completely and totally irrelevant. And they don't even get that. All right. Sorry. I promise I'll let the video run. The tough questions and your crowd welcoming the tough questions here. Um, I it, it, the question I'm is sure related. You're going to ask me an easy one, though, Mike, just to make up for it. <laughs> the question is about Springfield, not about the situation, but the the, the style, the, the the which I think is something new that we're seeing on the campaign trail. You you've said um, uh, regardless of what the exact precise facts are here, uh, it's worth it to make the larger point um, uh, of in town overrun by immigration. Well, I, is... No, no, I, I, I'd say, Mike, all, you ask your question, yes, but, but no, I, I didn't say regardless of the precise facts. I said you have to listen to what people are saying, right? The media has tried to say now for days that I've made up this story. I haven't made up anything. I've just listened to people who are telling me these things. And when I said, and the media always does this, they're very dishonest. When I say that I created a story, I'm talking about the media story. By focusing the press's attention on what's going on in Springfield, I'm not making anything up. I'm just telling you what my own constituents are telling me. But ask your question. That's that's the point. Your willingness to shine a light on issues you see as important. Sure. And, and I'm wondering if you can describe, if you know where your line is on that. Something, uh, you know, at what point, are what's something you're willing not to say in order to make a point that is important to you? Well, all right. Now, uh, we'll let him finish. But it's an interesting question. Uh, before he gets into it, I'd like to sort of pull on this New York Times reporter's thread just a teeny little bit and sort of expand this to a larger political question that I think is fair having in the United States of America. In other words, would this reporter ask 
Joe Biden, for instance, um, Mr. President, you continue to repeat this lie about Charlottesville that's been debunked across the board. Donald Trump never said that neo-Nazis and white nationalists were very fine people, but you continue to repeat that lie. I understand the point you're trying to make, but do you have a line here? I mean, is there any line that you're not willing to cross in terms of lying and slandering and and uh, defaming your political opponents just so you can make some sort of political inroads? And of course, we already know the answer to that question because we've observed Joe Biden over the last 50 years. Ask Clarence Thomas, ask Mitt Romney, ask Paul Ryan, ask Robert Bork, ask anybody who has gotten in the way of his craven political career. Of course, he doesn't have a line that he's not willing to cross. But the question's never asked over there, is it? Nah, it sure isn't. It sure enough isn't. And of course, Kamala Harris could be asked this question if she ever deigned to allow a reporter like this to ask a question. Uh, For instance, uh, Kamala Harris, you continue to repeat this lie that Donald Trump has promised a bloodbath if he doesn't win the election. But of course, everybody knows that he was talking about an economic bloodbath for the auto industry. It had nothing to do with violence. It had nothing to do with blood. He was talking about the economic ramifications for the auto industry and the nation at large should your ticket win the presidency. So why do you keep repeating that lie? Is there no line that you're not willing to cross? You see how this game is played? But no, the only question that's ever asked is of, first of all, a politician willing to engage in questions and answers. That would be, in this case, J.D. Vance. And the only question has to do with cats and dogs in Springfield, Ohio. It is really amazing how these reporters operate and do their job. But now that the question's out there, I really want you to see the answer. I mean. Come on, if you know, Mike. Well, my question for him, Mike, not, I, uh, not the crowd. What I, what, I, what I wouldn't say is that the New York Times is a respectable paper. That's one thing I wouldn't be willing to say. But all... Look, all, all, all kidding aside, if one person had called me and said, I'm seeing this in Springfield, we maybe let that pass. When four, five, six, seven people are telling me they, call, they see something in Springfield and on top of it, there are certain people who refuse to listen to them, who refuse to take their concerns seriously. That's when it's my job as a United States senator to listen to my constituents. That's that's really it's it's very simple. Now, I mean, look, there's a lot of crazy stuff you read about. I mean, I you know one of these things. I don't know if you saw the story from a couple of years ago that like the Defense Department had declassified the UFO stuff. Did you see that? That was a crazy story. I don't talk about that because I have no idea what's going on. So my standard for whether I talk about something, Mike, is whether enough people that I trust bring it to me, at least to the point where I feel like I've got to investigate it myself, not just trust the media to do their job, because a lot of times they don't. So that right. And that really is the bottom line here, because, well, as my late great mentor right over my shoulder, Andrew Breitbart, watching over me every single day we do this show, used to tell me every single story is really ultimately a media story. And this Springfield, Ohio story is, of course, a media story, not just the fact that they only paid attention to the conditions on the ground in that city after they thought they could use it as a weapon against Donald Trump and J.D. Vance to call them racist for spreading lies about cats and dogs. See, uh, otherwise, they couldn't give a crap about the people of Springfield, Ohio. That includes the Haitians who are living here, too, under temporary protective status. But uh, more importantly, J.D. Vance actually shows more Uh, critical thinking skills here in this answer than anybody in the press pool because they still don't get it. They still don't realize that you don't believe them. What are they doing right now with this Springfield, Ohio story? They're saying there's no truth to it. We have 51 intelligence experts who have verified to us that this story is disinformation about the cats and dogs in Springfield, Ohio. Now, of course, they're not literally saying that, but it's the same game that they played with the Hunter Biden laptop story. And you see, you can fool us once, you can fool us twice, you can fool us three times. Oh, screw it. You can fool us for the last 30 years of our mature lives. But at some point, we're going to get it. 
And when we hear a story and we see things out of Springfield, Ohio, and we hear firsthand reports from people who live there saying this is happening. And some reporter in New York or Washington, D.C. sits up there with his blow dried hair and a teleprompter saying, no, it's not happening. Well, at some point, we're not going to believe you, Mr. Blow dried hair. We're going to believe the good people of Springfield, Ohio, because you have no credibility anymore. Which brings us to the actual circumstances on the ground in Springfield, Ohio. You'll remember this moment from the debate. Oh, look! It's a TV journalist with a really nice-looking blow-dried head of hair. What a coincidence! You know him, that's David Muir. He was one of the moderators at the ABC News debate. And when Donald Trump raised the issue of the circumstances on the ground in Springfield, Ohio, he said this. There have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. Well, I've seen people on television. Let me just say here, this is the- The people on television say my dog was taken and used for food. So maybe he said that, and maybe that's a good thing to say for a city manager. I'm not taking this from television. But the people on television are saying their dog was eaten by the people that went there. All right. Now, David Muir, as you just saw, was uh, taking that from the city manager. He was quoting the city manager in Springfield, Ohio, because before the debate, they had a whole army of uh, pre-debate fact checkers, which I always love. What's Trump going to lie about? Well, let's get the facts in line before he lies about them. Ah, uh, what a job they've got over there. And uh, they checked uh, they, they checked with the city manager of Springfield, Ohio to ask uh, about the reports that pets are going missing because of the migrant crisis in that town. And, well, you saw the answer. There's no credible evidence of it, he says. He says that's because he checked with the Springfield city manager. But here's the problem. And that, that was a big moment, right? And there's David Muir, and he's got his blow-dried hair, and he's got his fact checks from his army of interns who have already set it up for him. And it was a great gotcha moment. And you see Trump's lying. Trump's lying. The problem is, yesterday, an investigative reporter who has been combing through the videos of Springfield City Commission meetings found a fascinating little clip featuring this guy. This is from five months ago. It's March of 2024. And this guy right here, you know who that guy is? That's the city manager. That's the city manager in Springfield, Ohio. Allegedly, the same guy that David Muir's legion of fact checkers proactively asked about the reports of cats and dogs, et cetera, going missing in Springfield, Ohio. What did the city manager say in March of 2024 about this very issue before the debate, before the memes, before Trump Vance? Gosh, this is so long ago. Joe Biden was still the candidate for president before all of it. What did they say in an open meeting on video? Laws and, and you know, culture is 180 degrees different than what they're used to. And one of the things that hurt that I heard that bothered me very much, and I've actually had quite a few people contact me here lately, um, is some pretty horrid things occurring to the domesticated animal in the neighborhood. Um, we've had some stuff in the park um, that, um, again, they, they're being taken advantage of for reasons other than and if you shake your head brian but no I no i asked yeah. saying i asked me if there was proof there okay, i just no don't proof. have proof if, of if I have, I have, the same thing. people that have confided in me have asked me for anonymity i'm not i can't give their names up i mean we haven't seen the proof that you're that you're talking, and i've right. heard i've heard about it too. yeah that's the city manager in march describing exactly what we've all been talking about now that domesticated animals are being horribly treated, terrible things happening to them. Several people, he said, have come up and told me that. One city council member says, you have any proof of it? Because I've heard about it too. Now, whether the city manager has said, no, we don't have any proof, and therefore that's the answer that they gave David Muir. Maybe the answer he gave David Muir is, listen, ABC News, here's the thing. I'm hearing this all the time. 
from the people here, but they don't have actual physical proof of it, but they say they see it. They're firsthand accounts. They've lost their animals. But are you asking me for firsthand proof of evidence of objective, you know, that I can take to the police and show? No, I'm getting reports from people who have lost their animals and they're nowhere to be found anymore. And it's never happened like this before, but I don't have direct evidence that Haitians are eating cats and dogs. And that's all David Muir needed. You see, he didn't tell the whole story. I'm speculating here. He just said what he needed to say. There's no proof of that. Well, actually, firsthand accounts are proof. It's evidence. You can actually take firsthand eyewitness accounts into a court of law, and you can use it as evidence. So it's not true that there's no evidence. There's actually firsthand reports. And this was contemporaneous in March when it was happening. But the most important part of that clip was at the very end, when that city manager said, listen, they're confiding in me. They're telling me this is happening, but they want to remain anonymous. Think about that for a minute. The residents of that city are so scared. They're so traumatized by what's going on in their town that they are acknowledging and reporting that these bad things are happening, but they want to remain anonymous, partly because potential repercussions from the very people who are causing great harm to their city right now in Springfield, but also, I mean, ask yourself for a second. Why would anyone want to remain anonymous? Why wouldn't they want their, their face and their name and their entire public persona linked to the story that cats and dogs are being terribly treated in Springfield, Ohio? Why would they want to remain anonymous? And my answer to you is, have you been paying attention for the last two weeks? Have you seen what the national media has done to this story? Have you seen how they're trying to destroy people's lives? claiming that anyone who claims such a thing is racist and a liar and a propagandist and responsible for bomb threats and responsible. I mean, of course they want to remain anonymous. Who would want to put their name on these claims? The behavior of the media during this entire thing ensures that there will never be someone to step forward and say, here's what I know and here's what I saw, because the first person who does that will be destroyed. But of course, the New York Times reporter speaking with J.D. Vance, all he wants to talk about is whether J.D. Vance has a line about anything that is off limits to make a political point. And well, it's funny because by asking that question, as J.D. Vance just uh, illustrated, well, the New York Times asking the question actually proves exactly the point J.D. Vance has been making this entire time. <laughs>